Welcome out to Third World Linux episode 90. I'm Zhao. My name is AG. And on this episode of Third World Linux, we are going to do one of those things people tell us or stuff people tell us episodes. So also known as the audience feedback episode. Because every so often we actually get feedback. <laughs> <laughs> or otherwise known as the Zhao and AG are absolutely wrong about everything episodes. And we're okay. <laughs> we're okay with that. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, if I, I, I'm okay if I, I get corrected. As long as what I'm being corrected for is I'm actually wrong and they're actually correct. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, like, that's... Somebody corrects me. One plus one is, is... You're wrong. One plus one is not two. It's seven. Like, you know. That's that's weird. But then again, <laughs> now somebody like based on the empirical evidence of the universe, we might actually be wrong. That one plus one might not be two. And now, one like somebody so much smarter than us, gonna write an email. One plus one is not two. Ag, it's seven. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe there's a number philosopher out there who's into Linux lives in the third world as well, who is listening. Let us know why 1 plus 1 is actually 7. And if you multiply 2, it's 14. And, um, uh, and, and for the people out there that are actually like good at math, <laughs> why, why is 100 divided by 333.3 repeating and 33.3 .3 repeating is not 100? <laughs> or 33.3 .3 repeating times 3 is not 100? Like, why is it 99.3? Are you sure it's 33.3? Yeah, dude. Like, okay, I'm not a math person, but. All right, let's save that for the off tangent. <laughs> Anywho, uh, first order of business. An email. The emails first? Yeah, emails first. An email that, like, I totally missed. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Ocelot. <laughs> um, and, uh, I'm gonna be, as usual, like, because this guy, this guy writes, like, these really juicy emails, and I can build, like, an yeah. entire episode out of this. In fact, like, we, we've done that before. <laughs> And um, I'm going to be doing like a, a supporter show episode on this, like when I'm driving home from the office or something. And mm -hmm. I'll just like... Pump out something. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So... Anywho. Uh, he says, Wiki is... It, oh, sorry. Rewind. <laughs> right, he says, Wiki is, not was. Hawaiian is not dead yet. What your friend did, AG, is what's called a folk etymology. Like thinking mm -hmm. the word island comes from insula, as in isla in Spanish. Fun fact, oh. island was spelled I-L-A-N-D for, uh, for years and friend, F-R-E-N-D. Just listen to your second world podcast and I think you guys are stuck in the 80s because modern Russia is not communist at all. Also, we all assume that modern China is still following communist ideals. Sadly, they aren't. And let's not even get into the DPRK. Cuba is cool, though. Still, I agree that tools are tools, but it's still illegal to kill or maim a person with a hammer willy-nilly. It's like veganism. Sure, it would be better to be one, but not everyone who is vegan is a lefty. There are neo-Nazi vegans. So people can have multiple and often contradictory identities and allegiances. So, AG, we may not agree on the Avengers, but we can at least agree on Star Wars 7. Highly flawed, but, in, but an enjoyable ride while it lasted. Poor Captain Phasma, she got totally punked. And which is... <laughs> <laughs> which is better, the Avengers or Fly Darna Fly? And a footnote, also Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square was a massacre. It's like the Boston Massacre in that way. Okay, so uh, first off, I'm really sorry about using the wrong tense. Because yes, Hawaiian is not a dead language. Some will say it's a dying language. But if you speak Hawaiian, I highly encourage. Well, if anybody speaks out, and if, if there are people out there that speak Hawaiian, I highly encourage you to keep the Hawaiian language alive. You know, just make sure that, um, the, uh, the, the languages of the Pacific Islands, that, that sort of, uh, the, the Polynesian language groups just sort of keep healthy, you know? Now I'm curious, but that's again, that, then again, that's extreme localization. But could that be a way for a language to be preserved? Well, or like what do you mean? a sort of way, since if you localize, 
if you localize it for a, a distro, you do the localization, like translation and whatnot. Like, do they carry that over or they have to update the localization every iteration of the distro? Well, localization is kind of a funny thing, right? Because, mm-hmm. uh, because in, a, in, in many ways, um, localization, I, I don't think is something that keeps languages alive. But say localization of technology is a way to move language forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessarily for restoration, but since you're adapting it to something modern as technology, you have to not evolve. The term is not evolve. Like you have to keep it up, keep up with the times, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and well, when it comes to when, when it comes to language, right? Like uh, I think. A lot of people are under this misconception that if a language is written, it is not dead. Mm-hmm. That is not true. Mm. A language is yeah, dead because... when people stop speaking it, no matter how much of it is written. Latin, for example. Uh... Latin is pretty much a dead language. Like the only people that actually use Latin are like folks in the Vatican. So like for all intents and purposes, Latin is a dead language, more or less. But you have so many like works written in Latin, but it isn't used as an everyday language. So there, yeah, pretty much like C. Uh, well, now it's replaced by C plus plus, right? Or no, there's forgot one of the things we learned, one of the languages I learned using in high school. I know that, that's a totally different thing. Programming <laughs> language, yeah, <laughs> because it evolves, right? Uh, language does, but then see the thing with programming languages is. The syntax of programming languages only change when somebody tells the programming language that this is how you change. Mm-hmm. Language changes. The actual language. <laughs> natural language. Natural yeah. language changes as people use the language. Uh, say for our case, we can safely say Alibata is a dead language. No. Alibata is... A system of writing. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Right. So, so language, um, language is that thing that comes out of your mouth when you speak. Yeah, sorry, that can be can also be the same meaning for spit. <laughs> yeah, because that's why that, that's why rappers spit their rhymes. You see. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Anyway, <laughs> but yeah. So, so the language is. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's, uh, on I the think Darna, that's that, you know. on, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, on on the Darna versus Avengers question, did you consume Darna comics ever? Uh, no, not really. I yeah, was, me too. Because most of the, guy. But yeah, <laughs> I was uh, uh super bubble and pugat baboy. Okay, we're being extremely local here. But uh, with regard to Darna, most of my knowledge of Darna came from like the TV shows. Mm. So that's why I'm actually super excited of the upcoming Darna movie. Right, that they're currently made. Well, they're still in the pro- they're, they're still in pre pro pre production. They're in development so, hell. <laughs> yeah, they're in development hell currently because they don't have the actual Darna actress yet, but they have a trailer for it out anyway, <laughs> like a teaser trailer. Anyway, so uh, I haven't watched Civil War, but on the Avengers, well, it's kind of unfair because it's apples to oranges. It's a movie and a TV series. But the TV series for me, especially the Angel Oxine ones, were amazing. I'm not sure where Ocelot can get a copy of those episodes. <laughs> mm. But she might, f- he might find it very interesting, especially because Angel Oxine. Right. It's just, you know, she, she, she pulled off Darna really well. Uh, what else, what else do we have to comment on the letter? Uh, <laughs> he called it a letter. That's so adorable. Well, technically, it is an electronic mail, or or or, or was this your <laughs> sly, or, or or was this a sly way of you going to the paragraph where he talks about how we're stuck in the eighties? <laughs> we kind of are. <laughs> I kind of am. Technically, I still use film. I love, absolutely love, like electric dreams. <laughs> Well, yeah. So, um, I, uh, was it kidding we, aside? We are. Uh, we did that really bad thing of uh, making a very sweeping generalization. Of course, um, always awful. We uh, we made the mistake of 
um, what was the name of that guy? Uh, Edward Said. He has this, uh, the fallacy. No, he has this, this, this theory Uh. of, um, Orientalism. The way the West views the East is not what the East is, but the understanding of the East through the lens of the West. So, flying snakes and stuff in India. Like that, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, we have a fairly, we're, and, and that's like a product of like Western culture, Western education, etc. So. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say, cause I think that's the side effect of us being very Western educated. No, that's not what, that's not what I was going for. What I was going for was, okay. um, while Saeed's Orientalism has like a lot of problems with it, and that's a different podcast for a different time, I'll probably Talk about that with my girlfriend on a bodega nights or something, but <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she's really into this whole like crit, critical theory sort of stuff. Um, what's it? But then it's still the way the West views the East and, um, your perspective is indivisible from your understanding of the world and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, and it takes a lot of work to sort of break away from the um, to break away from the way you view the world based on your own culture and based on your own educational you know educational experience your upbringing etc right and um Basically, what I'm saying is I didn't do enough work to, uh, you, you, you know, you know, stereotype. How, you know how we do I, this, I, right? I admit. We do this <laughs> without research and then we go to the stuff people tell us episodes to. <laughs> and then that's when we do background readings. That's why I think it was also Ocelot who gave us some videos before, like links before or, or another one who gave us links for more resources for it, which we appreciated because we watched it. And they're like, oh, so this is how they do it. Yeah. Um, Which is partly a great reason why we do these things anyway. Yeah, but it was... It was um, I, I, I will say, though, that I guess I was sort of aware of that, though. I was aware that um, that I was using shorthand. I, I was using Western shorthand to talk about uh, the Eastern Bloc or the nations that were formerly part of the Eastern Bloc in the 80s. Um, and I will admit that, yes, it was very intellectually lazy of me. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. Uh, Technically, well, the like, thing is, though, really, I should know better uh-huh, because we studied all of this in high school. Like, what happened to China post, um, post Mao, the big sort of divide between Russian style, uh, Russian, like, um, What's it like? Like the the, the division between Stalin and Mao, like how they were Mm -hmm. sort of communist y, but then not really because one was more focused on industrialization, the other one was more focused on the countryside, how they eventually split, and then how, um, how How that influenced Vietnam. Yeah. And how the, uh, how, how all of these ideas since the introduction of capitalism into these. It's sort of like this planned economy, sort of capitalism, and how this yeah. strays really far from the original ideas of Marx and um, Engels. So, like, I actually studied that, but I took the shortcut. <laughs> because for me, I was just, you know, we're just in the groove. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I, I, I didn't find it. It was, oh, you're still stuck in the 80s. I kind of think I am still stuck in the 80s. <laughs> Even my sister still thinks I'm stuck in the 80s. <laughs> Most of the things I like are in the 80s. But <laughs> kidding aside, though. Oh, yeah. So uh, the error of stereotyping, we admit to that. Uh, what other, are the other things do we have to address in there? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the rest of it in one, uh, of, on my, the, on the post show. In one of my drives uh, on home I, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Because there's there's this stuff here about puto and stuff about mamon, like huh? Yeah. <laughs> next up. Yeah. Next up, we got something from 
uh, Benjamin. First name. Yeah. Who says, hi, guys. Why register when we have driver's licenses and picture IDs? In today's information world, we don't need multiple instances of the same data all over the place. If the picture of a face is not adequate for biometric information, add a picture of a thumbprint. All that's needed at polling places is something to verify the authenticity of the ID. We need a project called GNU Elections. I am surprised nobody there is doing this. Interesting podcast. Thanks. Hmm. Okay. Oh, thank you. First off, thank you for thank being you. interested in our podcast. Yeah, man. Welcome to uh, welcome to Channel Fourteen. World. <laughs> welcome to the third <laughs> world. Um, yeah. Oh, I agree. The, yes. The problem is the political will. <laughs> Wait. Let me. Let me hold up. Let me check my driver's license. It has all the pertinent information. Uh, vamp, 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 vamp. <laughs> But yeah, pretty much a driver's license has all the has all the pertinent information. information. Yes, I was looking for my nationality. Uh, the flag connotes it, right? No. Well, the fact that it's a Philippine license doesn't mean you're a Filipino citizen. Exactly, but it, it doesn't mean you're a Filipino. But then citizen. it has it has it your nationality on there though. So exactly, because that's why when I I remember showing off my license when I was in the states to get drinks. Only one establishment, a club, was the one who refused it. Like, we don't acknowledge uh, your ID. But mm. it's like, this is from my government. And I don't know. Some, it was some, I don't know. One of the few times I felt like racism was in play. And then, But the other was, uh, the other bouncer told me, now we're just making sure, dude. Because, like, it's easy to fake foreign IDs. It's like, okay, then. It's yeah. A foreign ID and I'm a foreigner. So, I get it. Fine. I had a driver's but license friend, when I was 14. <laughs> yeah, so it's like I was telling, I was telling my, I was telling the other bouncer to explain to his friend that, okay, I get it, and you're probably just, uh, what do you call this? You don't want your establishment to be penalized for like you know letting an underage minor, a minor, go to your club, even though I was 23 at the time and yeah. Chicago drinking age is 21, but because I look freaking 17, because because <laughs> we look Asian. at the time. Yeah, because Asian. So, so I get it. That's why I, I just told the other bouncer, like, hopefully next time you explain it properly. Because I get it. So I just went back home and got my passport and showed, here, here's the passport. Actual thing, you know. Deny this, you know. I have to report to my embassy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, Stuff like that. Yeah, I, I totally agree, anyway. though. I, I totally yeah, agree. Yeah, totally though. agree. Like, we... I, I really don't see the need. Especially since, exactly, we have... IDs that mm-hmm. can verify our identities, and I'm, I'm guessing in many ways a lot better than the Commission on Elections can do. Like, um, I'm I'm pretty sure say that the Department of Foreign Affairs, when they say issue your passport, for example, has so much more competence than the Commission on Elections. In in which case, like, you show up at the polling place with your passport, that should be, like, an instant, all right, you can vote. Like, shit, put, me, put you in the front of the queue or something. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but it, you're lined up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that's... Yeah, just as an identifier, because, like, in a government system, like, in, especially, say, uh, just last week... Uh, I forgot to tell you this. I actually picked up... I went to the post office to pick up uh, a package from our friends from System AU. <laughs> package. Uh, and then... Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're, we're in... Well, we got some tapes and uh, stickers. I'll send it over to you or when you head here. Yeah, when I head there. Uh, I'll share them to you. Yeah. I don't know where to put it yet. But anyway, point is, I was there. And so every time I got to get a package, you have to bring out an ID. Yep. Uh, a government-recognized ID, right? Here in the Philippines. So... Fellow listeners, dear listeners, now those IDs are your driver's license, a social passport, security. a voter's ID, and social security card. So all of those four, when you look at it, they all have the pertinent information also needed for voting. <laughs> yeah. And if you want, like, man, the most, um, the most fucking useless, not a lot useless, but like the worst ID we have here is probably the most important one. The, uh, your tax identification number? Uh, I didn't get my, 
thin is there a thin ID really? Yeah, dude, it's like this fucking piece of paper with your picture like stuck on it. It's a piece of shit, but it's your most important. Oh yeah, that one. I I thought it was a card. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. Like it isn't made of plastic (laughs) and all that shit. It's it's yeah, technically. Yeah, it's not even a card. It's just a paper. (laughs) But they will. But some people, uh, some people will accept that as a valid ID. Really? Because it has your uh, because it because it has like the most important thing about you in terms of what. In terms of the way the government looks at you, right? The government looks yeah. at you as a taxpayer, and on that thing <laughs> is your, your fucking taxes. tax identification number. <laughs> <laughs> and then they don't even, and it's not even an actual ID. <laughs> <laughs> but there, I, I don't that's why know. I was confused when you said people acknowledge that as an ID. I was like, that's a piece of paper I just hide somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> there you go. Um, in fact, like if you have a tax identification number, like that should be that should be good enough for you to vote. Yeah, because at least people know that you're a taxpayer. The government knows you're a taxpayer and you are part of the system. And you're over 18. <laughs> and you're over 18. <laughs> but yeah, going back, all of the these information IEDs, the system can easily be put in place, but nobody will make that system work <laughs> or have the political will. To push towards that system. Yeah. Well, well, fuck. <laughs> <sighs> and so next up, we have stuff from uh, the Google Pluses slash the YouTubes. Mm-hmm. This was on our episode last week on elementary OS from Linus. No, not that Linus. Uh, he says, it should be noted that elementary OS doesn't have any quote-unquote desktop. It is not possible to put icons on there by default. The image files with numbers are also literally the names of the photos. All right. So first off, that was my own negligence because I should have known that you couldn't put shit on the desktop by default because it's, if I remember correctly, it's based off of GNOME 3. And mm-hmm. GNOME 3 doesn't put stuff on the desktop by default. Oh, so it's really just absolutely clean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and I use the GNOME desktop on like a daily basis. So, oops. <laughs> oops. <laughs> but then I didn't make that was on connection. You so, yeah, because, uh, that, was, that was on me. Yeah, because I don't use GNOME. Anyway, yeah. either way, but you have used elementary... <laughs> Like I've only ever run elementary on a, um, I've only ever run elementary on like a, uh, no, for for a week. I think the the longest I've ever run elementary is for like a week or two. Well, I've used elementary how long? What two and a half years ago? Yeah, and it wasn't me that used it. It was my sister using it. Which uh, which 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 will bring us to the next um the the next like comment we got. Um, but then do you have anything else? The the image files with numbers are also literally the names of the photos. That's reasonable. Yeah. So I, I mean, guess it's like a, a nice to know, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I And I, I don't mind because I also commit that sin. <laughs> some of the photos I just upload on Instagram, say, via from my camera or some snapshots. I don't change the file names anymore. So like you have DCIM, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because nobody's going to care about the file name of of that one but say i'm handing it over to a client that you have a couple of fucking podcasters from halfway across the world looking at your desktop background (laughs) (laughs) anyway yeah ml what was the infant that was the probability of that (laughs) and the thing we just did who does that Who, who freaking who freaking reviews desktop wallpapers? We should make this a thing, though. <laughs> we should do this. We for, like, should. We definitely Google should. Stuff. I absolutely love it, actually. Like now, I'm looking forward to seeing Antergos in elementary. How they're gonna like have more desktop choices or whatever, like pushing forward. Yeah. Super excited. And, and now <laughs> that like, I'm 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 trying to not not so much nothing nothing on the future yet, but I'm trying to set aside money for an actual box again. And maybe right. play with elementary on that. Right, right? Like, I just want to have a box of multiple hard drives with multiple distros. 
on it. Just so, you know, just to have fun. I just, I just want to have fun with computing again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make computing fun again. <laughs> uh, um, so the uh, the next the next thing we had was also on the background. The rocks were the default in Luna, and the mountains were the default in Freya, which is the current release. And um, I guess that just shows how long ago it was since we've used Elementary OS. Because yeah, that's why I think it's about time for me to get back on it. It's not gonna run smoothly in my current netbook setup because again, too low spec. But it's one of our favorites, looks wise. What your netbook? Yeah, I mean, it can run it. It it, it will install on it, but it's not a sm- super smooth experience. <laughs> it's one thing to install it on it, and it's another thing to actually use it. Yeah. Looking at you, Ubuntu sixteen oh four. Oh 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 <laughs> you oh, because <laughs> my download is still you know third world internet speeds. Oh, <laughs> normal B two sixteen oh four. We have to Grr. save this on our no- like anyway. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. So I guess that just shows how um, how long ago how long ago it was since we've used elementary OS. And again, another like nice to know. So thanks, guys. And nice. They use Freya for mountains. Yeah. So Norse god, right? But the, the guy's name was Lewis. No, I mean, the Freya was the... Norse yeah, 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 but uh, sorry, sorry, I totally... Uh, I, I'm yeah. not sure if I remembered to mention the fellow's name. Shit, I said uh, fellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are indeed from the 80s. Gee, golly gosh. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> that's a little bit earlier, me thinks. Yeah, <laughs> We're going the, further yeah. and further back in time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next thing we know, we'll be talking like we're from the World War II. Like, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the le- the radio show of the Third World Linux. <laughs> Something with that that transatlantic anyway. with that transatlantic accent. I actually uh, did like a voiceover like, like that once, just for kicks. Hindenburg. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Third World Linux. <laughs> Welcome to Third World Linux, and for today's episode, we will use latest technologies <laughs> called computers. The ENYAC has easily been updated and invented. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it is not your mother's counting machine. <laughs> Look, so, so Tommy, I was, uh, who's it's t- huge. Anyway, <laughs> I, I was I was gonna like transition from putting elementary on your netbook to a tweet that we got about putting stuff on stuff. Are you putting putting stuff on stuff about laptop? What laptop to get? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, long time faithful 14 Louis asked us, like, he oh, was. We got his he, name he, right. Mm, after he told us. <laughs> yeah. Um, pretty much a simple question. What laptop can you recommend for Ubuntu? Thanks. So, right off the bat, my, the answer I gave him, like, I replied all immediately. Where was my reply? I can't seem to find it. Responsible your, computing. Your engine. reply, if I remember correctly, was, uh, you said like I use Neo for my netbook, blah blah blah. Yeah, because um, it's Neo technically has like some of the lowest, uh, lowest prices for the hardware. But what I want to interested if uh, like if you want if you have a bit of a budget, go for Asus yeah. or Dell. Yeah. So so the uh, so so the tricky thing with like my own answer to this question though is I haven't picked a laptop for myself. Since 2007. And... Because <laughs> <laughs> everything is pretty much a hand-me-down or... Not, not necessarily a hand-me-down, like a gift. Or... No, I mean, it was, it was either office issue or something that I found lying around. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and just, like, hope to God that Linux runs on it. Because, um. <laughs> <laughs> well... Last time I picked my own computing device was, uh, well, technically for my netbook, pretty much that. Because, you know, iMac's just lying around. Uh, I recommended Dell because Dell, I think, especially, we were talking about it. Was it you I was talking about it? The Dell gaming laptops? No. Yeah. Um, but then the, like, well, well, Dell the works thing... well. Well, I don't, um, I don't know. When it, when it comes to running a Linux distro, 
the things you're supposed to avoid are Broadcom driver or Broadcom chips and mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> AMD cards. Mm-hmm. Well, like like fucking Broadcom, I know for a fact. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the headaches you get from a Broadcom chip. Just like, downloading the drivers. Yeah, you have to find the driver and, and all of that. If you listen to, if, uh, if you guys listen to um, the the Linux Mint podcast, right? Like that guy Isaac talks about problems with Broadcom drivers when trying to install Arch. Um, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god, the humanity. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, so just avoid the Broadcom drivers. Uh, well, the, the thing I can say, no one, about having, like, like getting a, a laptop that, for, for Linux now. Um, if it has a, if it has an entry in the Arch wiki, and it doesn't look oh, like you have too many problems there, like, you're good. Because like sometimes if you have an entry on the Arch Wiki, that means it has a Broadcom driver and Arch and the Wiki is telling you where to get it. But I'm gonna. Um, uh, or at least people have resolved it. Yeah, uh, hopefully. Then another way. Generally, you're not gonna want to get top of the line, brand new hardware. Yeah, not not don't go for the leading edge. But the one I'm recommended, aside from Neo, is Asus, because Asus. Currently is interesting, especially the ZenBook. Mm-hmm. If are you familiar with the ZenBooks? No, yeah, not even. Like yeah, the I've ZenBooks are thinner than the MacBook Air. Have more plug, uh, not not more plugs. Like okay, technically it's thinner at its thinnest side. If you get what I'm saying, because <laughs> yeah. it's like a triangle shape. It's it's a weird sentence of what I just said. Thinner than its thinnest sides. <laughs> anyway, and uh, has more sockets. Yeah, I mean. If I'm not, if I can recall correctly, one USB 3.0, two regular USBs, even have, I, f- I forgot the other things, like SD card reader. And compared to a uh, MacBook, it performs faster than the MacBook. <laughs> hmm. um, what, what was, there, there was another, uh, there was another like laptop. Yeah, the, the, the thing that people always seem to say is get a ThinkPad. But then those are expensive. Not a ThinkPad. Oh, yeah. A ThinkBook. ThinkPad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, IBM. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's now Lenovo though, right? Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's a Lenovo now. Um, or we can That's do how long have we been since we purchased like laptops? Yeah. Oh, what was it? Or we could do the thing that you did, right? When you got your, when you got your netbook, the way you went to Neo with a uh, with an Ubuntu 1204 USB stick. And mm-hmm. like you put Plug cash on, you put cash on the table and said, if it installs, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not necessarily install. If, if it, what do you call this? Uh, what I did was, cause Neo sells at the time, cause now they think they have an exclusive license with Windows, like distribution deal with Windows before. Man, they would sell them. you <laughs> or not sure. Or they're not just marketing it because on the websites, on their website, you could still buy L and W. Like L, it's if it's Linux, cheaper price. W, if it's Windows, install Windows 10. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it, in the actual stores, it's, that's the case. But before, what I did was I went to the actual store. Um, hey, do you have a working, like, I can test or whatnot? Sure, use this as test. Can I insert my USB drive? What am I going to do? I'm going to run live USB. And then the clerk was, huh? Oh, just don't break it. Break it, you buy it. And then I said, if it works, I'll buy it. <laughs> then put 1204 in it, run smoothly. Like, all right, this is my thing. So I bought it. Put 1204 for the longest time. So if you could do that, Louis, why not? <laughs> <laughs> because I had this like, I remember we were talking about this when you're like, but what if it doesn't run Linux, man? What if it doesn't run Linux? You're like, just bring a USB, put, you know, put your 9,000 pesos on the table and be like, if this installs. <laughs> I buy it. Yeah. That's a nice way to buy a computer, actually. I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> Say if I'm eyeing, because especially now, like, hopefully, hopefully business picks up with me and my girlfriend. A business we're gonna go through. 
And it's going to involve mostly working on the road. I'm going to need a, a computer that will work on the road. The performance will be great. And I'm eyeing that Asus Zenbook. I'm going to do it. Go to the Asus office. Here in my hands, in this 4 gigabyte USB, <laughs> holds your next sale if it works. <laughs> That's so much power. I like I like that. I'll do that. <laughs> Make them nervous. Then when they see like like going through the BIOS and all the what do you call that? It freaks people out. I love it. I love it about computers. They don't use BIOS anymore though, right? They use um e- e- EFI? UEFI? Yeah, UEFI, yeah. <laughs> Is it UEFI? I just call it UEFI. Anyway. <laughs> Or, or as long as they see the command line and it's blinking and then, ooh, so many things are being written. They're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like when you go into an Apple store, like, <laughs> just go into an Apple store, open up the terminal, type in top, and then walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that because <laughs> I don't want trouble. <laughs> no, nah, man, you just walk away or I, I don't know. It's- <laughs> They're gonna panic. They're gonna panic. Well, yeah. Like, what did you do? What did you do? <laughs> oh, the other fun thing that you can do at an Apple store is take a screenshot of the home screen and then set it as your background. <laughs> <laughs> this this could be an exciting <laughs> episode. <laughs> this is an episode in itself. <laughs> what, what, like fun things to do at the Apple store? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 <laughs> It, it, like even though it probably like does nothing right it's it's such a good feeling though like when you when you take a screenshot of the home screen on an iPhone or an iPad and then set it as it, the wallpaper <laughs> and then just walk away <laughs> do you have anything else uh well just a response from Daniel Fiore Fiore sorry from Daniel yeah, Foray of, um, of Elementary OS. Like, he's not a good um, guy. He's not a bad guy. He's the guy. Of what? Oh, oh yeah. Of sorry. <laughs> he is the guy. <laughs> yeah. Of Elementary. He just said that uh, this is a lot of very interesting feedback. Thanks for doing this. For our uh, wallpaper episode. Because, again, <laughs> why would everybody <laughs> review desktop wallpapers? <laughs> because it's pretty Fun. much the only thing we're fucking qualified to do. <laughs> Kind of fun, <laughs> yeah. Put the fucking liberal arts degree to good use. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, when people, you know what? Because people are like, AJ haven't reviewed any new books the past month because I, I I really don't have time to review new books. It's like, have you reviewed anything new? I'm just gonna link them to that episode here. I reviewed desktop wallpapers. <laughs> And there's also art criticism episode of Bodega Night. So <laughs> just link them to those two things. Yeah, man. So speaking of Bodega Night, uh, if, if that's another one of our shows. So for yeah. podcasts and stuff, head over to channel14.com. And uh, follow us over at twitter.com slash thirdworldlinux. Yeah. Um, what else? If you want to send us electronic letters... <laughs> Yeah, um, email us contact at channel14.com or linux at channel14.com. The former gets to, to yeah. everybody involved in channel14. So that'll be the other people that you'll hear. And the latter gets to the third world linux people. So linux at channel14.com. And, um, check out our other shows on channel14. They're all listed there. Yeah, and channel14.com, like uh, Bodega Nights and aforementioned Bodega Nights, uh, Radio Norm. Yeah, and do check check those out on YouTube. I, I worked yeah. semi hard on that. Yeah, yeah, we we our YouTube's looking very very swanky recently. So that's the uh, and stuff part of podcasts and stuff of channel14.com. Pretty much that. That's the, <laughs> we're uh, not doing other stuff. Well, that's the. Um, <laughs> that, that it, that's yeah. the product of me not having class. <laughs> like, all of a sudden <laughs> I have evenings free. I can do stuff. So, like, <laughs> Radio Norm, 
fucking Captain America spoiler episode for Bodega Nights. Like, <laughs> all of that. Um, and uh, head over to patreon.com slash channel 14 to help us unsuck ourselves. I love that. Help us unsuck yeah. ourselves. That's a good copy. That's a good copy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so until next week, keep on Linuxing. And do things for love. So if you made it this far, this is the off tangent section. So uh No I haven't watched um Payback. <laughs> yeah, because I'm gonna say, here's the thing we always discuss. Pro wrestling, art, Starcraft. <laughs> do we do we discuss art theory? Yeah. So yeah. What else? Those are the things we discuss. Movies are out, or comics and movies are out because I haven't watched Civil War. Wrestling is out because you haven't watched Payback. <laughs> So that leaves art, but kind of don't want to discuss art right now because <laughs> I've been I've been doing a lot of technically not art, something tangential to it, writing about it um, all day. So like, nope, don't want to do that. The other thing I did today was just clean the bathroom and cook and clean the house because mom is sick. So uh, no one discuss that. What are we going to be off tangential about this day? <laughs> off tangential? Good copy. Good copy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was something that I said I was gonna to discuss. Well, there was something that I said I was going to talk about, but I cannot remember what it was. You're gonna receive an email about what that is. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. Well, uh, I got nothing. What? Uh, what? There's nothing new. Uh, I'm gonna start work tomorrow with like the business that. Hannah and I are doing. We're gonna. Oh, uh, like my girlfriend and I is doing. Is uh, we're gonna start tomorrow. So mm. first client, uh, which is fun and exciting. And uh, I've told you. Well, yeah, I've showed you Urban X Ray, right? Yeah, yeah. That's actually really funny. Oh, did you did you upload the stuff to the drive? That way I can start doing like the Gaussian blur overlay thing. Oh yeah, <sighs> that's what I should have been doing the past weekend. Cause the weekend I was just resting. And then, boom, when, when freaking yesterday I was doing laundry and then today, like, cause mom got sick and then today I was just cleaning the bathroom. Insane, insane. And cooking and doing a lot of manly stuff. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I should, I should upload some of the urban x-ray stuff on the drive. Like, do you need, what's the, do you need, we need the, uh, like, high quality on it or just, Web viewing. Uh, it doesn't really matter because, like, what I'm doing is, and this is something for the main show actually, but uh, what what I'm doing is I am uh, scaling them up to 1280 uh, to 1280 pixels wide, and then mm-hmm. Gaussian blur, then cropping. And then- to 1280 by 720 that way it's picture then pasting um pasting the show title on top of it oh and um curves 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 a uh, f- bit of few adjustments to like pump up the contrast yeah well actually uh i love gimp right because um you have a few like scripts and plugins and stuff for gimp that like you can apply, you can apply one curve to all of your level, uh, to all of your layers. So, like what I did with my collection of photos and Norm's collection of photos, that's like over two hundred each, maybe. No, <laughs> it's about three hundred. How photos. long did it took you? Like it's about three. Just a couple of minutes, right? Well, I don't know, a couple of hours because it takes a while. So yeah, so it's like what three hundred layers or something on a computer from 2007 so 300 layers um one script will crop the layer to the image size so that's one pass through and then uh apply like this one curve to all of them so it doesn't it it looks kind of 
They're, they, 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 they're all, yeah, they, they all look, they all look uniformly shitty and yeah. too dark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, and then apply a Gaussian blur to everything. To that make sure way. it's all uniform. Yeah, to make sure it's all uniform and so that you don't see the fact that I was really lazy with curves. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did your curve go? Is it like a parabola or no an S curve? No, not not an S curve. Um, because I that's something I'm not really good at yet. Like, I I know how an Instagram look like uh, an Instagram a histogram. <laughs> would look like when I look at it, when I look at a picture. But with curves, it's still very tricky to me. Yeah. Um, well, basically what I did was, um, you know that I like my photos. You know that I like the curves of my, uh, the curves, the histogram of my photos to be very heavy on the left side. Oh, yes. Right? Because, oh, yes. because it's dark, right? Yeah. A lot of shadows, then muted highlights. Yeah. So... Basically, what I did was push everything to the right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it. I get, I get what you did. Right, just push everything to the right. That way, there is no space on the right, more or less. And then just curve it down a little bit. So, so it isn't like an, <laughs> so it isn't like a straight angle up. It's like a, a curve. Yeah. Curve up. That's, upwards. Yeah, an upward curve that starts, I don't know. Like a hill. A third. Or, um, starts a third of the anyway. way in to the, thing yeah so like i guess you can sort of see what that looks like yeah and you know how how yeah, and, and you know why i need to blur it <laughs> because like applying that uniformly to all photos of different exposures are going to make it look terrible <laughs> <laughs> and to make you know anonymity and make it smooth and sexy yeah like, and one radio norm episode had my face on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, and there was a what's it? You just add, and then after that, you just overlay the title to all all of them. And then there's another one that there's another script or plugin where you can save each layer as a different uh, picture or as, as a different image file. So, like by the end of this entire process, you have like 300 image files just processed. As though it were like a factory. Like, ah, I love you, Gimp. We sh- well, I was going to say we should have that centralized for everyone. But then again, I realized not everyone uses Gimp. Yeah, their loss. Yeah. I mean, their loss. It's our loss because the, the when you look at the video feed, the it looks everything looks different. And like it's not uniform, I mean. Should we have a uniform look or, you know, keep it spicy and saucy? Uh, whatever. So everything that whatever comes out of the <laughs> everything that comes out of the podcast side of things of the podcasts and stuff, like all of that, I'm trying to make sure comes out roughly on time and has a consistent look and feel. Mm-hmm. Because I want the podcasts to be clean. 